Hi, and welcome to our LinkedIn Live series on the release of the ISM Report on Business. My name is Dan Zeiger. I'm a senior writer and copy editor for Inside Supply Management. That's Institute for Supply Management's member publication. And we're excited to have you with us as we break down another interesting month of services PMI data. Uh, the composite index reading was 51.5% in August, boosted by slightly faster growth in new orders and despite some mixed results on employment that we'll discuss. I'm on site here in Napa, California, where ISM is having some meetings this week. So from wine country, let's pop the cork on this month's ana analysis by bringing in Steve Miller. He's the chair of uh, ISM's Services Business Survey Committee. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Hey, Dan, doing great. Not, not as great as you, but definitely. <laughs> yeah, I got a nice backdrop here instead of my usual boring office. But uh, yeah, just uh, the August readings. I mean, were they kind of a pleasant surprise. I mean, obviously not gangbusters growth, but the index actually did increase, uh, you know, especially given August can be kind of a hard to read month for services because vacations and end and experience uh, spending ends for the summer and school resumes. Just, uh, you know, what were some of the standouts in the data for you? Yeah, so, uh, so Dan, oh, definitely pleased to see some continued light strength in the services. Um, you know, over the last 10 years, uh, August has been uh, a stronger month in uh, in six of the months and, and a weaker uh, in four. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's good to see uh, good to see the the strength, uh, especially given the given three of the four indexes in the composite, uh, the new orders, the business activity, uh, and employment being on the positive side for the second month in a row, uh, with slightly um, slightly faster, slightly improved index on the supplier deliveries, being, still being uh, below 50, but a, bit, a little bit closer to 50. Yeah. Uh, new orders growth uh, picked up a little bit slightly. That was probably the, the most uh, pleasantly surprising reading, I would think, of the four in sub-indexes that directly feed into the PMI. Uh, you know, just what were some of the key drivers there? Yeah, so... Um, when you know, kind of to put it in context, uh, you know, it's showing expansion, but not at the levels that we saw on average, 22 mm -hmm. and 23. We kind of saw a high to, at, to mid 50s levels uh, in those two years. But from the respondent commentary, uh, you know, we saw healthcare and social assistance, uh, finance and insurance, information and transportation and warehousing, as well as utilities, showing continued growth there. So, um, so it's nice to see. Uh, especially with the backlog dropping the way it did, seeing new orders um, uh, in in expansion mode, I, I think that's that was a really important number, uh, you know, given given the context. Yeah, I think the talk of you know at least of the interviews that I've uh, seen um, this morning, you know, the employment index was the number that kind of stood out. I mean, I, I, the markets definitely uh, have been a little bit uh, hesitant. Uh, in rely in uh, relation to the recent employment data, the ADP number um, the other day, and of course the big Friday uh, uh, jobs report from the from the BLS. There's going to be some anxiety around that. It looks like, and uh, you know the our report on business did not offer much encouragement um, on that. The index was in expansion, um, but you know there was some uh, not very positive sentiment in the in the, in the uh, comments. Uh, some of the uh, uh, panel members talked about hiring freezes or layoffs, um, you know, so just to give us a broad picture there, it, it kind of definitely a mixed bag uh, on employment. Yeah, so uh, so starting in January, we were at 50 and a half, and then we were in the 40s all the way up until last month. So, um, so although it's only 50.2 this month, it was not, you know, it's certainly important to see um, flat or slight growth uh, there, you know, compared to other Augusts, uh, they tended to be up in, you know, 53 uh, higher numbers uh, in general than this. So, um, you know, in, in terms of driving inflation and consumer spending and rate cuts and things like that, it certainly seems like now is the time uh, to give a boost to the economy, given that the employment index has been negative for so long. Um, or for almost all of, of uh, 2024, and then just last two months being slightly positive. Uh, it's it's um, 
it, it's it certainly feels like time to take action. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind of expand on that a little bit. I know we've talked and, you know, and I know you were asked about it this morning in other interviews and we've talked, uh, you know, in previous months over the course of our calls, you know, that definitely the sentiment that, you know, monetary policy clarity is definitely needed. You tend to hear that a little bit more from the manufacturing sector, uh, a lot more than we hear on the services side. There have been a couple of months where, you know, that, that that sentiment has been really overt. But yeah, just talk about, you know, how the panel, you know, how the community feels, uh, uh, you know, about uh, uh, about uh, uh, some a little bit interest rate clarity that we're expected to get in September and just what that might mean for the services sector. Sure, sure. Um, on the uh, on the construction side, you know, we saw um, we saw contraction uh, this month from expansion last month and saw some commentary around slowing uh, housing demand. So it it can't you can't help but think interest rates and mortgage rates uh, are something that's driving that uh, that slowdown. On the utility side, although we're seeing continued growth. Uh, the commentary also reflected uh, defra delaying or not taking on new projects uh, because of the in interest rate environment. Uh, so those two in particular through the commentary, but then in general, you know, when you're when you're justifying um, improvement projects because we have information, so systems and system improvement, software investments, that type of thing are included in our index. Uh, on our, our real estate um, and rental standpoint, uh, where you have to invest in capital equipment to then um, participate in the rental environment, you know, for uh, for renting equipment or using that equipment, uh, buying it yourself. Uh, interest rates always come in to, or, or your inventory carrying costs, uh, if you're looking on the inventory side, come into that evaluation of whether it makes sense to move forward on an improvement project that requires investment. Um, so I, I think we're seeing, well, I know we're seeing in the commentary that interest rates in a couple of areas are impacting um, in that investment level. Uh, and with them easing, hopefully, uh, you know, starting uh, with an announcement tomorrow, uh, if all things uh, go well, um, I think that that'll be, uh, that'll be an improvement um, for services as well as manufacturing. But I think as Tim pointed out, working capital is much bigger um, uh, consideration in manufacturing and the services industry, other than a couple of the industries that I already mentioned. Yeah, yeah. You talked about some of the specific industries, um, you know, that would be impacted by uh, an interest rate cut, and just talking about some of the services industries in general. I know in the months that you've been chair, I, I sense that that's uh, an area that you really like to dive into, and you know, looking down the. The, the reports this month, arts, entertainment, and recreation um, appear to have a really good month. They were first uh, among industries, uh, the 18 services industries in overall growth. They were first in business activities in new order, and they ranked third in employment. Um, you know, just to, to discuss that, you know, and any other industry activity that, that, that stood out to you in this month's report. Sure, sure. So, uh, so the arts, entertainment, and recreation, we saw commentary a couple of months in a row around improved slates in uh, in movies um driving some of the uh, increased attendant and attendance in that part uh, of the sector which was different than what we saw um in the accommodations and food services which saw a flip from um from expansion to contraction so i think definitely on the entertainment side uh new product coming out we have seen in the last two months a uh, very positive view in in both july uh, and in august Educational services, probably on the other side of surprise, not surprise, you know, because August is when kids are back to school, when college students are back to uh, in, in many areas of the country, um, back in session. And so we saw that flip to, um, uh, to growth again. Uh, information we saw flip to growth again, which that was a surprise given the concern around where interest rates are. Uh, and, and like I mentioned before, the investment uh, criteria, you know, your, uh, your impact of, of investment cost um, in making those, those software and hardware investments, maybe SaaS environment, you know, is, is making that more feasible. Um, but it was nice to see that that since it's such a big, big chunk of the economy, about 7% of GDP, 
it was nice to see that one flip, uh, but it was a surprise. I didn't think that that was going to happen until interest rates went down. Yeah. Um, how about the, you know, let's talk about dive into the prices index a little bit. I mean, it, they, sure. the things look like they pretty much stayed steady. I mean, the index increased slightly, but boy, I look at those commodities up in price, you know, it's just amazing how in the services report that labor, it just seems to be always there, whether it's, you know, uh, labor in general or construction labor or, you know, temporary labor, you know, just uh, uh, give us a breakdown of the, of the, of the prices uh, situation in services. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, both manufacturing and services uh, saw uh, prices uh, month over month increases in the rate of expansion. Um, but in services, you know, the last two months have been lower than the average uh, for the prior six months and really lower than all but three of last year's uh, readings. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the commentary that we've seen over the last three months have been reduced focus on prices uh, going up more about the cost of things, but not more the rate of change. So um, certainly feel uh, feel that the commentary that we have, as well as where the PMI ratings are coming out, very consistent with what we're seeing in the uh, uh, federal reporting of uh, of interest rate or sorry of inflation rates. Seems to be coming down, moderating, but costs are still up because you know interest rates were high last year and and they're not in the negatives. Um, you had mentioned it earlier in your in your lead in, and I know you were asked about it this morning. I I, I noticed it too in the in the data. The, you know, the backlog of order index is that's an index that you know I think is talked about a lot more in, in the manufacturing report more than services. And you know the the services index has been a little volatile recently. It's been up and down uh, the last four months, and there was a big change this month. Um, you know, just any reason, you know, for that, re the, the activity that, that it has been the way it has been recently. And, you know, just what are some of the services industries, um, you know, maybe get a little bit of a tutorial on the index, which we like to do from time to time. You know, is there, are there any services industries in particular that are most, you know, impacted by backlogs, maybe more than others? Yeah, so we'll, you'll see in uh, information and information mm -hmm. services, uh, when they do their quarterly reporting, they, they report on backlog. So uh, services yet to be um, delivered uh, from contracts that have already been signed. Certainly in construction and utilities, you have that as well. Projects that you have on the books that you're going to be delivering over time uh, that haven't been delivered yet. Um, what what um, I thought was, um, so I got a good question a little bit earlier today. Uh, right after the numbers were released around the volatility of backlog. Mm -hmm. And looking back historically over the last uh, eight or nine years, uh, our, the volatility that we've seen over the last uh, couple of months um, is, is not uncommon, but also not common. So kind of maybe 20 to 25 percent of the readings over the last year have either been up by a similar amount, five, four, five, six, uh, or more percent um, uh, or down a similar amount. So uh, that one seems to be the most, I, I haven't done this analysis, but from looking at that, those numbers and the occurrences of kind of higher percentages of change, uh, it looks like uh, from charting that out that it's, it's either the most or one of the most volatile numbers uh, that we have. Something that was different that showed up uh, this month, Dan, was mm -hmm. cancellation of orders and cancellation of projects. Uh, I hadn't seen that in commentary in prior months. And so that was a, that was a little bit of a, hmm, you know, when, when looking through uh, that maybe people were expecting interest rates to go down sooner. Uh, and so they've canceled projects or, uh, or maybe it's just, you know, strength of demand in that specific industry wasn't as much as uh, those companies were looking for and, and they had customers cancel some orders on them. Yeah. And then another index, you know, that is kind of, it, it's specific to uh, services. It's, it's one that uh, has always interested me is the inventory uh, sentiment index, you know, except for the pandemic and, you know, a couple other exceptions. And the history is that it's always been too high. Um, I think for, for like the first 270 months of, 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 of uh, the, the data collection going all the way back to 1997, um, it was too high. I mean, just uh, as, 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 as someone who knows that sector really well, just, you know, why do you think that is? I mean, is this something that uh, 
executives and supply managers look at as it's just a nagging problem that, you know, or is it just or do services companies in general um, just like to have buffer stock? You know, I think it's probably indicative of the, uh, particularly in, when you look at, uh, at retail uh, and wholesale, having the wrong inventory mm -hmm. um, has you with the opinion we have too much because we have too much of the wrong inventory even though overall we might not see a higher a higher climb and you see from an inventory levels uh, we're seeing pretty good pretty good number there um, from inventory sentiment you know so so for the for the inventories we saw that go to expansion from mm -hmm. contraction over the last couple of months and uh, and that indicates to me the commentary that we've seen over the last few months of inventory control inventory reduction plans in place are are um, are starting to work uh the sentiment although we have too much we don't have too much uh, as much as we used to have too much uh so the number is a little bit uh, moderated from uh, from a historical viewpoint uh, and so the interpretation that i took out of that dan was that some of those programs are working from an inventory reduction standpoint um and they're start they over the last couple of months they got inventory uh reset at a number they're more comfortable with and that with the promise of interest rates coming down makes people feel a little bit more comfortable with where they are yeah well i mean let's uh lo look at a uh, big picture a little bit i mean you pointed out last month um you know the the, the recent monthly average um for the services pmi uh, was lower only during the pandemic and and the and the global financial crisis in 2008 and 9 um and you know tim fiore pointed out um uh, on a, a tuesday that the recent man manufacturing period of contraction um while it's been you know pretty long you know in terms of severity no it does not compare to the great recession or the dot-com bust or or, or, or um the, you know the pandemic um it's been much more stable um, you know, given that, you know, the, you know, and the, and the recent economic environment, you know, over the last couple of years, um, you know, the manufacturing contraction, it's been stable. It's been, it's been weaker than, than, than previous, uh, crises. Um, but we, you know, what does that say for services over the last couple of years that, you know, except for a couple of months, uh, uh, of exception, I mean, not only has it been in state, you know, not only has it been stable, but I mean, it's been in an expansion. Um, you know, what does that say about the resiliency of the sector? You know, with with it being such a significant percentage of our overall GDP, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's very important that we stay uh, stay in a in a growth mode in order to support those things that you mentioned earlier, increased mm -hmm. labor rates and and uh, um, you know and prices from that standpoint. Um, you know, the the thing that for me is a maybe you call it a yellow flag rather than a red flag is mm -hmm. just continuing numbers that say. You know what? We're just over 50. Uh, we're not 53. We're not 56. We're not 60 uh, like we were in prior years. Um, and so that expansion rate of 51, um, you know, 51 and a half really shows a dynamic where, you know, we've got um, many flat and a little bit positive and a little bit negative. You know, it's kind of a it's kind of a spread of uh, of winning winners and losers rather than everyone growing um so you know for, for me the overall perspective is uh reflected i think in the employment numbers is that it's a very low over 50. Uh, and that that seems reasonable from my perspective you know you don't want to bring on too many people because you frankly you disrupt their lives by hiring them and then firing them you know, when you see that that growth doesn't come back or doesn't go as fast as you had planned. So I think that cautious optimism uh, is, you know, is kind of a key phrase. I think I mentioned last month as well, uh, that a, a low growth rate, um, at least if you trust the last 12 months of data, uh, looks like where we are at the moment. And, and it'd be interesting to see, uh, depending on whatever administration comes in, whether they're able to help boost the economy in a way that uh, that's beneficial from uh, from a quality of life standpoint. Yeah, yeah, that's a that, that's a good point, and it, that's a, a, another question I, I remember you being asked this morning. I mean, obviously, the election um, has been a big uh, topic of discussion um, on the manufacturing side as it relates to trade policy and whatnot. Um, just what's your sentiment as you take the pulse of the of the services sector? Um, 
you know, uh, obviously it's it, it's a big deal to, you know, business people and all Americans, I would hope. But, you know, just <laughs> what are some of the key issues that, uh, you know, that, that you sense from the community as they think about the uh, the election coming up? Yeah, I, there as um, as the opinions of uh, that are stated or the positions that are stated of each party get more and more similar, um, I think I, I would expect that the anxiety would come out of the if you trust people at their word, you know, mm -hmm. the anxiety around those statements uh, or, or the future should come out somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, if you look historically, there's still quite a bit of difference between what portions of the economy would get hit harder or would benefit more. Uh, you know, I, I, I just keep close to, to both policy and, um, and historically how policy has been executed or not. Um, you know, the old saying, when all is said and done, more was said than done. Um, you know, and, and making sure that, uh, that I think, again, caution wins the day until uh, until the die is actually cast. Yeah. Well, as we look back at the, you know, um, uh, at the August reading and, and you know, uh, obviously resilient, you know, given that, you know, it can be an, uh, uh, a mixed bag month for the services sector. Based on that, just how do you see the rest of the year? I mean, obviously, the election is going to be a source of anxiety, as you just elucidated. But I mean, holiday spending is going to be coming up, you know, and and, and that factors into it. Just, you know, um, what do you uh, see as the key points of the services sector as you look ahead to the rest of the year? Yeah, well, we're not seeing as many uh, from a, the consumer side, retail and such. Um, we're not seeing, although we're still seeing some, we're not seeing as many comments around uh, international trade imports, uh, container availability, and that type of thing. And uh, and what we did here is back in the uh, the late spring, uh, people were getting ahead of the game by bringing in inventory early uh, was mm -hmm. with concerns over what might happen on the East Coast and even on the West Coast for uh, for labor and, and bringing containers in. So I, I, I feel pretty confident that as long as consumer spending holds up, um, that retail will do well uh, this the end of this year. From a PMI standpoint, and historically what's happened, um, in, in the majority of the cases, the last half of the year comes down from August to a lower number. Uh, now being at the, uh, on average, um, when we come down to 51 and a half and 51.4 the last two months, there isn't much down uh, to take between now and the end of the year before you're in contraction territory again. Um, so from my standpoint, that's really the, the, the big watch out is that, um, is that if we see reduced growth, um, like we have in, in many of the prior years, uh, from August through the rest of the year, uh, that could spell some trouble in terms of getting from you know, getting from expansion to contraction territory. And I just need to go back to this again, that the uh, the plans to reduce interest rates um, uh, through in September and through the rest of the year seems like it's coming at just the right time. Or uh, maybe from Tim's perspective, a little bit late, uh, but seems seems to be a good thing coming uh, coming our way. Yeah. Well, hey, Steve, yeah, those are all the questions that I had for us today. I um, mean, anything that I haven't asked or anything that we haven't talked about, um, the, you know, in regards to this month's report that you think might be important to know? No, I think you I think you covered it. The last one for me is the most important is that we're seeing uh, we're seeing moderated growth or very, very low growth. Um, and, you know, keep an eye on it for the next couple of months. Uh, if we if if uh, the index drops from here, uh, you know, it could have a negative impact in terms of uh, employment and, and uh, you know, and other business activity. Uh, so yeah, it's still like I, I think consistent for the last couple of months uh, where we're seeing, you know, an average 51, 50 um, kind of rate for the year, 51 and a half. Um, there isn't much to go before it's it's kind of trouble. Uh, so yeah. um, stay tight. Uh, you know, keep those inventory numbers to a place where you can service the customer, but not too high and take advantage of the improved supply chain performance that people seem to be talking about the, the uh, kinks in the supply chain. Um, although not removed, they've been accommodated. And so supply chains are performing better than they were at the beginning of the year. 
Yeah. Well, wait, you know, we do have a couple extra minutes here before we close. I, I just pulled this question out of my, I, I thought it's, it's a good one I, to ask. I think, you know, you've been doing this for, uh, you know, three or four months now, you know, you, that you've been the chair. And I, I, I thought I'd take the opportunity to ask. I mean, you know, since you've, you know, come into this position, you know, just what are some of the, you know, anything that you've learned about the, uh, about the PMI data or the services sector that, you know, has pleasantly surprised you or anything that, you know, given you a perspective that you may not have had before, just, you know, what are some of the biggest things that you've learned is in, in your, in your uh, few months as uh, chair of the committee? Well, I, I really like the fact that the data um, is very current. Mm -hmm. And when you look at how other data starts mapping uh, conference board data, uh, in terms of consumer confidence, and you see labor uh, labor data in terms of employment, it matches really well to uh, to what we're seeing, uh, at least as far as I've looked back over the last couple of years, um, to the behavior that we're actually seeing in the economy. So it, it uh, sensitizes it uh, you to it more or me to it more in uh, in when I hear an ADP number going, oh, how does that compare to what uh, what we're seeing today uh, in our release? Um, so I think that's, it's, it's, um, you know, we, not, not a surprise to people that are probably on the webcast. When you talk to procurement leaders, they have a very good finger on the pulse of the rate uh, of growth or contraction of their companies. And when we're surveying those people, uh, we get very close to the, the actual what's happening now kind of data rather than something that might be baked into a, a quarterly business plan or, or something like that. It's been yeah. fun. Yeah. Well, that's a good transition because, um, you know, we have an opportunity, uh, you know, uh, if you would like to be a part of the ISM manufacturing services or hospital business survey panels, that's uh, Steve Miller just spoke of and the vital role that they play um, in compiling the data for the report on business, you can do that. Uh, feel free to go to ismworld.org slash join the panel for more information on that. And thanks for joining us today. And just for more information on the services PMI itself, you can go to ismworld.org. Um, more in a little bit, you can read our roundup article that details a lot of what Steve and I discussed here, as well as how the markets are responding to the data. Uh, so we'll see you back here in a month's time. Unfortunately, I will not have a scenic backdrop as I do now, uh, but we will break down the September ISM report on business. Um, so for Steve Miller and some good people who helped us behind the scenes today, uh, Christina Kale and Jennifer Stevens, my name is Dan Zeiger, and we'll see you next time.